Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of No Flight Images, and um, in this video I'm going to have a look at what I would say is an introduction to making great prints. Um, why do I phrase it like that? I get a lot of questions from people saying, I've got such and such a printer, and I'm looking to make better photo prints, art prints. What paper should I choose? How should I start out? What software should I use? This is aimed really at people who are in that uncertain phase where you're looking, there's so many options, you're not sure where's best to start. Should I get paper sample packs and try lots of different papers? Quick answer to that one, no. I'll come back to why, um, but in general, where do you start? Well, I've written lengthy reviews and most of them, or certainly the more recent ones, have videos as well that go with them. And I've looked at a range of printers. Now, they tend to not be the very cheapest printers because with those, whilst I could make great prints quite possibly, um, it would be a lot of work. Um, and the market they're aimed at, you wouldn't have the software and equipment necessarily to make really good looking prints. You might be lucky, you might get good prints straight out of the camera, out of connecting camera to a printer or something like that. You might be okay. But in general, um, I'm looking at people who have produced their uh, photos or their artwork, they've got them on a computer. Um, if you've got them, if you produce stuff on, a, on an iPad or something like that, transfer it over to a computer to do the printing. It really is a lot better. Um, I know it may seem an unnecessary step, but phones and iPads are not made for high quality printing and all the sort of stuff that goes with that. So get it onto a computer and do it from that. Now, I use Macs for everything, have done for many, many years, but you can do just as well with PCs. I just don't ask me PC questions. I've not used one this century, so my knowledge is seriously out of date. I can make a guess at most things, but I don't have experience. All my testing is done on Macs. So I've got reviews. I've also got things called profiles, which are available on request for different papers. And I'll come back to what profiles are and what they do, although I've got loads of other videos. Uh, if you're curious, if you're, you're new to my videos, have a look in the notes to this. There is a link to a complete index page of all my videos. Uh, YouTube, is pretty useless for indexing your work once you've got lots of videos and there are over 500 of them. They cover all sorts of subjects, printing, whatever, cameras, specialist lenses, all sorts of stuff as well. So have a look at that if you want some more info. But my reviews, I have profiles for them and I go into what papers I've tested them with. Now, I'm talking, as I say, reasonable printers. What do I mean reasonable printers? Well, Canon Epson printers are the ones I tend to look at. Inkjet printers, not lasers or other, other styles of printer, but yeah, inkjet printers. Um, you know, a low-end one, because it's more of a home office printer, would be something like the Epson 2850 here. It's an eco-tank printer, so you get ink tanks. The problem is it's only four inks, and for photo printing, you're using effectively only the three color inks. And there is a potential problem with that. It does limit it a bit. So that's, yeah. I would much prefer something like the Epson 8, ET8500, ET8550. Of course, you can go up to the bigger printers. Uh, I'm going to assume that if you're buying something like a P700, P900, or, or something like this big P5000 that sits here, uh, then you know about all of this stuff. Um, if you don't, then you really should um, have a look at the videos and the reviews. I've got lots of background info on it. So I said use profiles. What are profiles? Well, the quick bit is profiles are uh, little data files, they allow your computer system to do the transfer from the colors that are in the image, in your photo, your artwork, to the colors that need to be sent to the printer to get optimal results. Um, it's no more complex than that, other than knowing that you should be using a profile that is related to the paper, and each profile is specific to a printer and a paper. So you can't take a profile for one printer for a particular paper and use that paper on another printer and use the same profile. It doesn't work that way. So you need profiles. The easiest way of getting profiles is to use Canon and Epson papers. Canon papers for Canon printers, obviously Epson for Epson. And it works that way. Now, 
come back to a little bit more about that in a moment. But you've got profiles. I've got profiles listed in the reviews. Have a look at them. Um, in terms of printers, I mentioned this Epson one here. There's an interesting matter of Canon lower end printers. This particular one here, and you can see I've printed a card on it. And I'll, I'll come back to cards in a bit when I talk about media. Um, this particular one here was a G550. Now, if you use a G550 on a Windows system, you can print using profiles. If you try and use a G550, and that includes all the other G models and quite a lot of Canon's smaller printers, on a Mac, there is no color management. You are stuck using AirPrint. It effectively means that um, these printers, you can get good results out of them, but you're starting off with one hand behind your back. Uh, because Canon have decided that for these printers you do not need proper color management. Now I seriously disagree with that and I think it's a, a, a poor move by Canon and I've told them this plenty of times. They do ask so you know they do they do take notice of what I say. Both you know the, the companies do contact me and ask me about stuff that's when I do the testing. That's a major failing. If you have a G550, G650 or any of the other models have a look at my, and you're using a Mac, have a look at my written review for the G550 and it explains a workaround for it. Because it's a workaround, I can't recommend it because it relies on knowledge that people may not have. Even so, with both Canon and Epson printers, my suggestion would be right up front, use the Canon or Epson software to print with them. Save your file from whatever application you're editing it in or you processed it in and print it using with Epson, Epson print layout. Ignore the fact that if you try and download Epson print layout and you see on the US site that your printer is not supported, it's nonsense. Epson have got that wrong. Um, quite, <laughs> quite deliberately, they mention it just for better printers. It actually works for all sorts of different printers of theirs. So, Use Epson print layout for that. The Canon print software as well is also very good. That will take care of various profiles, but obviously only some profiles for some papers. So back to that question I said about media. What papers should you start with? Well, I've got, you know, these are test prints. I've got boxes full of these test prints which I've produced from my reviews when I've been testing printers. I have lots of different papers but when I get a new printer, if I get a new Epson printer, the first paper I will try on that paper, uh, that printer will be Epson Premium Luster. That's my go-to start off paper. Similarly if I'm testing a Canon printer depends what I've got available, but it will be the equivalent, a luster photo paper or a semi-gloss. Uh, semi-gloss, luster, all those terms, they're a bit marketing inspired, which means they mean whatever you want them to mean. They're broadly similar. Um, Semi-matte, semi-gloss, gloss, you, you will see the difference if you put the papers up against each other, but they don't necessarily make that much difference when you look at the prints. So for any new printer that I'm testing, and I may have experience of testing lots of printers, but a new printer is to me a new printer and I start out from scratch. I use Epson or Canon papers to start with. Doesn't mean that I'm saying anything against third party papers. In fact, if I remember right, both of these prints are done on third party papers, makes no difference. But to start off with, use the OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, Canon, Epson, use one of their papers because their software will have been tuned on that printer to work particularly well. And the other key thing is when people say, well, what papers do you start? I said, you know, start off with a luster. My choices would be to general, yeah, depending on how many papers you want to start off with. The simple one for photos is premium luster or Canon luster equivalent. You might decide and it depends on the printer, some work better than others, you might decide you want a glossy print. Now this one I'll move it about and you may well you can see the reflection on it. Uh, this is just a um, length, long length, set as a custom size and printed as a panoramic scene at Port Leven in Cornwall and um, that's multiple images stitched together and yeah, on a, on a stormy evening. 
Yeah, so we've got, that's a gloss paper. So what papers to start off with? Elasta. Maybe a gloss if you like glossy photos. Glossy photos tend to work better at smaller sizes. As you get larger and larger, uh, this is uh, this is an A3 plus or 13 inch by 19 inch print. As you get to gloss at this size, the reflections of it become more and more troubling. You might say this is a matte paper. You can see there's no reflections. This is uh, Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast. You can see no reflections when I move that about. Um, this particular paper, this is an art paper, cotton rag type art paper, but you may decide you want a matte or yeah, there's ordinary matte papers, uh, matte photo papers, and you get art papers. The art papers tend to be a bit more expensive, so you might not want to initially start with that. You might want to just start with some basic matte. Uh, the Epson one would be Epson Premium, Epson Archival Matte, EAM. There are several matte papers that will do for that. And as I said, by using Epson or Canon papers, you will have the proper profiling for them. So you won't need to worry about getting profiles. If you go to an art paper, they do some like uh, rag papers, fine art papers. You'll see the settings for it. And for some printers, such as this 2850 here, if you use the art paper print setting, it uses all four inks. So this particular printer, although it may not be great when you print a glossy colour printer, a photo, actually if you print it onto a matte paper, because it's using all four inks, you can get surprisingly good results from it. You try other things, try printing black and white on this, and you are likely to be disappointed. But as I said, this is more a home printer. You want a big printer, this thing here that I'm sitting next to, um, that's, that's what I call a big printer. And uh, that's uh, an Epson P8500, if I recall rightly. 44-inch um, printer, printing out large black and white panoramic print. Um, so you've got this, I've, what sorts of paper? the basic four gloss luster matte art paper and that should be all you need first thing to print though and this goes for any new printer that i'm testing uh, now this image is downloadable and i put links to it in the notes to this this particular test image is my standard test image it tells me what the black and white quality is like it tells me different colors um, there is in the note, if you download this, if you go to the website and download a copy of this, you will see there is a description of each of these little panels as to why they're there and what they show. Now, if you can't produce a great looking print of this image, which is a standard test image, then what hope have you got for printing your own images? Do not use your own images to initially test a printer. Use something like this, even if you only print one copy of it to see that everything's working. Because if this comes out wrong, you've got something wrong somewhere. You know it's not the image because it's a standard test image. So use something like this to test that everything's working okay, that you're comfortable with the software. If you want to print borderless, by the way, um, borderless, um, it takes a bit of care because the image needs expanding over the edge and that ink has to go somewhere. So um, there are pads in the printer which will normally pick it up. Borderless doesn't work with custom print sizes. Normally you will end up with borders. Um, borderless is available on many printers, but do check the specifications to see whether what you want is available. If you're doing black and white, I've got a black and white test image. Now this black and white test image I created years ago, different versions of it. And it's been downloaded thousands and thousands of times by people over the years. And I can do a black and white print on this and I can look at this and what's in this tells me instantly whether the printer is probably any good for doing black and white. Remember, black and white is more difficult for printers to do well than color. Seems counterintuitive, but black and white often takes more care in getting good quality black and white than it does for color. So you need to take care. But I've got lots of stuff that covers all of this. Just check the references and stuff. I mentioned cards earlier, cards here. If you were going to be printing cards, you'll notice that one there is printed boardless. That's only some sizes work at boardless, so you have to be careful with that. I have test images, by the way, which are the right format for printing the cards, for using an image like this for testing cards. They have text on them and stuff like that, so you can see how fine the text is printing. But that is a specialist card media. It is an inkjet media. 
when people contact me and say, I'm using such and such 160 pound cardstock, I instantly suspect they're gonna have problems. Cardstock is a term used for generic commercial printing. If it is not specifically made for inkjet printing, the results are likely to be poor. And I know loads of people who've tried printing on pre-cut cardstock on all kinds of printers, even quite expensive printers, and the results just look awful. Why is that? It's the wrong paper. Uh, you need to start off with something that is meant for that printer, for inkjet printers. Um, it is available. Um, this is from a UK supplier. Uh, this is from Paper Spectrum. There are several other suppliers, Focus, Photospeed, Permajet, I know, that all do pre-cut cards. Um, there are suppliers in the US and elsewhere for it. But do make sure that your card stock is meant for printing on an inkjet printer, because otherwise you'll likely be disappointed. And if you've got a big box of the stuff that now won't print, well, you know, you work that one out yourself. So anyway, that's my basic guide to getting into doing better prints. Anything more than that, I'm getting quite detailed over stuff. So the key is use a printer that's up to the job. Start simple with your media. Don't Get lots of test packs and things. Print a test image and use the Canon or the Epson software. Um, and that should get you started. Once you've got that, once you can produce a great looking print of this test image, then all you've got to do is take great photos to print. And that's all there is to it. Um, this is just the technical bit. You know, just simply about taking photos. Um, obviously it isn't. But anyway, I hope that's of some help. Um, please do ask questions if you've got any, because it's people's questions that specifically give me the ideas for videos like this. I've covered similar topics to this in other videos. Have a look at that video index. Uh, it's got details of everything organised by category. Um, so, you know, hopefully that's of help. Uh, thanks for watching and bye. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks.